One of my favorite things about wine is that the same grape variety can produce drastically different styles depending on where it is grown. Let's take Sauvignon Blanc for example. Across European countries versus New World, you get a variety of different aromas, flavors, stylistic expressions. We all know Sauvignon Blanc produces aromatic, expressive wines that are high in acidity, mouth-watering, the thirst-quenching, youthful and exuberant with lots of fresh and fruity flavors. But if I were to mention the homeland for Sauvignon Blanc, we would say it comes both from the Loire Valley in France as well as Marlborough region in New Zealand. Both these regions have pioneered and excelled through their diverse climates, variations in soil and winemaking techniques to create styles that are distinctive and benchmark styles for Sauvignon Blancs which are loved by wine lovers around the world. Today we have three wines to taste blind, a Sauvignon Blanc from Sancerre in Loire Valley, one from Marlborough region in New Zealand and a Sauvignon Blanc from Stellenbosch in South Africa. My colleague has poured them out for me without telling me which one is which. They're all blindfolded as you can see. So today is going to be mastering the art of blind tasting. Lovely lemon green color. Mmm, very expressive nose. Lots of lovely fresh grassy notes, herbaceous notes, green pepper, passion fruit, gooseberries jumping out of the glass. Really a very expressive wine. On the palate, the wine again is very expressive, lots of acidity a lot of mouth-watering quality. All of these really is a benchmark Sauvignon Blanc style from New Zealand. Uh, Marlborough region of New Zealand is a cool and sunny region. So whilst the cool climate really produces wines with really high acidity and a lot of mouth-watering quality, uh, the sunny climate really ensures good ripening of fruit which is evident through the passion fruit, uh, some of the grapefruit that's coming through. So the fruit is ripe, but the wine is very fresh and uplifting and very zesty. Let's take a sip of the second wine. Okay, so this wine is a lot subtler. Uh, it's not jumping out of the glass in terms of its aromas. It's more subdued. It's it's. But there's lovely florality, lovely floral notes right at the tip of the uh, wine that's sort of coming into my nose. Um, there's, a, there's some good minerality, a, a chalkiness in this wine that all of this is kind of leading me towards more the old world. So I would say I would lead more towards the Sancerre region for this particular wine because again, the wines out of uh, Sancerre as compared to Marlborough region of New Zealand are distinctive, yes, but they are much subtler. They're not as expressive. Uh, and the florality and the chalkiness, the minerality that's evident on this wine is very reminiscent of the chalky marine fossil soils of the Loire Valley. Uh, and of course, the, let's take a sip. Let's see what the acidity is like. Again, like number one wine, this is an unoaked, fresh, vivid, really high acidity my mouth's really like just watering lots of lime fruit so the high acidity and the lime fruit is really taking me to the cool climates of Loire Valley uh, in France and I think that's what this wine is there's a lovely elegance uh, to this wine and um, yeah that's that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking this is more Sancerre as compared to this which is much more expressive um, on both the nose as well as the palate. Uh, but I will decide after I've tasted wine three. So, okay, so the wine three firstly, slightly more deeper in color as compared to wine one and two. This is a more lemon and almost with some gold tints in the glass. Um, on the nose, I get a much more riper expression. So there's more tropical fruits like a, like a pineapple, passion fruit, all of these coming through. Uh, which is kind of leading me to more warmer countries where the fruit is able to ripen more successfully. Uh, on the palate, the wine is much broader, more generous, slightly more body on this wine as compared to 
two for sure but even as compared to one it's a bit fatter it's a bit fuller um, fleshier is a good word if this wine is fleshy uh, there's a lot of ripe fruit even sitting broadly on the palate Stellenbosch region of South Africa would definitely be more temperate more warmer in climatic conditions as opposed to the Sonsair from Lua Valley as well as the Marlboro region of New Zealand so to me this wine is probably definitely new world because there's lots of fruitiness or you know more fruit driven wine um, probably not as expressive as the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc because it doesn't have so much of those grassy capsicum notes which and tomato notes which one would expect on a Marlboro from New Zealand uh, so more of stone fruit ripe fruit coming through on this wine which I would definitely therefore place this wine uh, in the Stellenbosch region of South Africa okay so let's see if we were right uh, this is wine number one this was two this was three let's take a look time for the reveal da -da -da. okay this is cloudy bay from New Zealand which is the Marlboro region of New Zealand uh, perfect uh, this wine I hope it's a sunset god there you go that's a sunset that's a Henry Bourgeois from the sunset region of Loire Valley and obviously wine number three is the one from South Africa I'm curious to see which one. Oh, the Spear from uh, South Africa from the Stellenbosch region and this is actually a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Semio and the Semio well, why did I not pick that up? But the Semior really was was explaining the body and the fleshiness and and uh, Yeah, it was lovely. I enjoyed that wine actually very much I don't think that wines available in India, but obviously my colleague found a bottle to slip a, slip into my glass uh, So there you go guys. I hope this was helpful because this is how you sort of taste the aromas flavors you discern the structure you look at the acidity you look at the mouthfeel you look at the ripeness of the fruit and you're able to sort of tell where potentially the wine might be coming from uh, but wasn't it just fascinating to discover the stylistic expressions of Sauvignon Blanc and how they change depending on um, you know the the soil the climatic conditions of that region and also winemaking techniques I mean all of these wines were not aged in oak uh, but perhaps the Sancerre was made at a, you know, fermented at a cooler temperature, which really brought out the, the elegance of the fruit and the floral notes that stood out. Um, whereas this might have been fermented at a slightly higher temperature. There you go, guys. That was the many shades of Sauvignon Blanc. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment and tell us what more you'd like to learn in mastering the art of blind tasting. But no doubt we'll be back with many more. And until then, cheers for now.